Okay, um, next I'm gonna just pick up the pace a little bit so we have plenty of time for questions. Um, so for management, um, again, mild to moderate symptoms, activity modification, many patients, um, also at night, many people like to flex their elbow, put some pressure on the ulnar nerve. We can do um, some type of elbow brace to, to basically keep the arm in a more neutral position. Um, many people, when they drive, will rest their arm on a um, on the window if they have the window rolled down, right on the spot where the ulnar nerve runs. So we could do these kind of activity modifications to help take pressure off the nerve and see if it improves over several months. If not, we consider surgery. Also, we consider surgery for someone with more moderate to severe symptoms like atrophy. And we'll just, just briefly go over some of the anatomy here. Um, kind of upward in the diagram is proximal, to the left is more distal. Um, you can see really the most common sites of compression are here. There's Osborne's fascia, which is basically the roof of the, the cubital tunnel. Um, as you go more distally, um, there's some compression at times between um, the heads of the flexor carpi ulnaris. And then more proximally, um, people have reported arcuate structures. Okay, so this. Um, same orientation as before, it shows the skin incision. You're making an incision between the olecranon and medial epicondyle. Many times um, the nerve is closer to the medial epicondyle, so I'll, I'll bring my incision a little bit more close to the medial epicondyle. Um, usually for a patient who's not had surgery and there's no evidence of subluxation or dislocation, I'll begin with decompression. And we talked about some of these entities that you want to, um, to open up here. Um, Arcuate ligament is another name for this um, structure between the heads of the flexor carpi ulnaris. All right, so this shows um, some of the, the common compression sites along the ulnar nerve. Um, there's another entity called the medial intramuscular septum, um, above and below the elbow, which if you do a transposition, which I'll show in the next um, slides, very important to remove this segment as well to, to avoid any compression. Uh, here's um, just some ultrasound pictures. Uh, this is kind of a diagram here. This is the medial epicondyle, the olecranon, the groove where the ulnar nerve sits. And you can see with, um, with flexion, here's a nice circular nerve by the asterisk. Um, as you flex, this nerve starts traveling upward. Here it's uh, very much compressed, and then it's actually made its way over the, the hump to the other side of the medial epicondyle. So this is a patient that would undergo a transposition. And that's shown in this uh, cartoon here. Basically, we have the, um, the ulnar nerve here. It's decompressed. It's mobilized um, in this common flexor mass. Um, Cuts are made, this is called a Z-plasty. You can see the, the shape of a Z here. Um, basically, you, you basically take these two flaps, you open them up and you suture them together. So now you're, um, you've are you mobilized the nerve out of its common spot, which you see here, over the medial epicondyle. And basically to prevent it, you know, the nerve sometimes could have some memory to prevent it from going back, you suture in these flaps to keep it in this new location. So again, very important to remove the medial um, intermuscular septums, make sure everything is smooth below the nerve, that there are no kink sites that you've created, that the nerve is nice and straight. I'll mobilize the arm up and down to make sure that's the case. And also very important to make sure that this, this sling is not too tight, that you can fit at least two fingers um, underneath it to avoid creating a new entrapment. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you liked that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.